Hi and welcome to Movies Remastered. Now today's video was going to be an explanation of where I've been for the past few months. I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. But the long story short is I lost the entire project. No. 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 Oh no. Now, don't worry, because I will go into loads of detail today. Now, it, it might not be interesting for some people, but it could be life-saving for those people that lose their project. Uh, now, if you're using iMovie, uh, let me show you. Now, just going up to the folder. Now, wherever you manage all your folders, this is where I'm at. So you always get an iMovie project library. So if you left-click it, then right-click it, you can show packages. And basically that shows you all of your projects and like this one here so it gives you the original media and everything else but I've also kept that in all of my other folders which is in my movies remastered folder so I've got all my extra bits in here so the good thing about iMovie is that it duplicates it uh, so if there's any problems then you can figure it out that way but it's also pretty bad in the fact that it uses up so much space now premiere pro is totally different if we check again we go into um premiere pro work and instead of copying everything over it just gives you this small um project file so it only works from all the original folders so again, all my original content is here. So all of my original stuff are in these folders for each different project that I'm working on at the moment, which is great, but really bad if you move any of your folders around or uh, files get corrupt, which happened to me. So let's have a look at what happened when I turned on Premiere Pro. Now, unfortunately, it's exactly the same thing has happened to me now, uh, because I think it's something to do with, it's either my computer that's the problem or my hard drives that are a problem but sometimes my hard drive dismounts uh, as I'm saving stuff and it corrupts a lot of folders and different files. So when I upload Premiere Pro, it does this. So if I click Rise of Skywalker project that I'm working on at the moment, when it loads up, it says that these, folder, uh, these files are missing. Now that's what happened when my original folder uh, file got corrupted. Uh, now the others are here because um, I'll go into that in a minute. So basically, all you need to usually do is click on the folder and then click locate and then find out where your original source material was. So mine would be in uh, Drive 8 Terabyte, Movies Remastered, Rise of Skywalker, double click, go into source materials. Now, it's, like I said in my um, early video of how to start a fan edit, it's a really good idea to keep all of your folders in a really good order that you know. Like I, I do all the source material in one folder, I do all my audio in another, I do all my sound effects in another. So I've really got that file system perfect for when I need to find different folders like this quickly. What you would usually do is double click that and click OK and it would relocate that folder. Now what happened to, to me was the original file was corrupt so it couldn't locate it. Now for some reason it played in VLC, but it wouldn't play in Premiere Pro. So you think, well, that's really easy. I'll just recopy the DVD, I'll reburn it. So I'll, I'll use um, Make MP, uh, MKV or Handbrake, both at the same time. Uh, so you rip the, rip the DVD and just transfer the folder. I then go into there, go into source material, and then I want the, this folder there and then click OK. I'm going to do it. Should I do the other ones right on here? OK, let's do that. So let me tell you a story about the Phantom Menace and the Revenge of the Sith. I don't know if I've got them here. I haven't got them. Well, anyway, uh, basically what happened was I'm, I'm doing a Coruscant scene where I want to use all loads of different planets. So I thought I'd get the <sighs> the Phantom Menace, uh, well, I, I got the, the three prequels. Um, so I got them on eBay. Uh, they then arrived, I think, not around here. Uh, and I went into Handbrake, burnt them. Turns out they're only 720p. 
I don't want to work in 720p, I want to work in 1080p. So I've bought three DVDs that are completely useless now. So and then I had to get a Blu-ray. <laughs> this project's costing me a fortune. Anyway, so, and then it should load up. So when the project loaded, I got this message. And it just means that all of these source, source files are not here. This one here, look, you can see. It's not there. So when I tried to re-add the Blu-ray, uh, the DVD version, click OK, it just wouldn't allow me to. So when I cancelled it and uploaded it, this was the folder that was missing or corrupt. Now so is the other one that I imported recently. But for some reason this was 1 minute and 37, uh, 1 hour and 37 minutes and the original was 2 hours and 16 minutes. So I think I'm going to delete that. That's the corrupt folder. So I'm going to get rid of that. Right. <laughs> it just, and that gets rid of all the folders. So we're going to undo. So it just meant the whole project was lost. So I needed to find this DVD or this Blu-ray copy to replace that folder. And then once I've replaced that, it will just load up properly. But it wasn't that easy. Well, for some reason, my DVD was completely messed up. Uh, it wouldn't play. It kept skipping at parts, so I was unable to rip it. Plus, when I really uh, I started this project, I really didn't have many skills. I didn't really know what I was doing, especially when it came to ripping DVDs. Um, so my original source file was only about um, two gig, uh, two gigabytes, which at that point I thought those files were huge but now I'm obviously working in sort of 20 I think it's 22 28 gigabyte files so it's extremely high res sometimes in 4k um, so I was then in the dilemma of I needed to buy the blu-ray so I went and uh, went up the town and purchased it came back thinking that my computers allow me to um, rip blu-rays put it into the computer it doesn't allow me to rip it so I've now got this DVD that doesn't work and a Blu-ray that I can't rip. So I then put the SOS out to a lot of people uh, and thankfully somebody sent me uh, a Blu-ray copy. So what happened was, I'll go into the source material. Now as you can see, look, this was my original folder uh, file at uh, 2.81 gigabytes. So that was tiny. So then my mate then sent me the 4K 24.44 gigabytes. Now, at that point, I really didn't know what I was doing with Handbrake either. Uh, so I put it into Handbrake. We can show you, I can show you here. So I've opened up Handbrake, and I think that was the original source folder. So let me check the size. Yeah, so I just clicked on that folder on the 4K version and opened it. Then it obviously started to process it in um, Handbrake. I went into video. Now, it's these settings that I didn't really know where I was going, and I still don't really know where I'm going. So if you know any uh, anything better than me, please leave a comment below, uh, because I'm sure loads of people would help out as well and really appreciate the information. So I'm trying to build this channel into a bit more of a community. So if you can help out with anything I'm saying today, good one. So yeah, so I went into here, and then I basically just changed the loads of the settings. So I want I didn't want to lose any more resolution because the first one was so bad from the DVD rip. So I went into maximum, then I clicked into here, modify general, and I thought, right, let's just go as big as we can. We go um, Super HQ, 1080p, including surround. Now when I did that, oh, I also did the audio here. So you get different audio settings. Um, so 7.1 in AC3, and uh, you can do it in stereo. You can see it here. So you can do it in 5.1, 6.1, or 7.1. So it gives you all the different options that you want, and you can burn them however you see fit. Um, so when I did that, and I did the the full resolution and the the Super HQ, burning time was 172 hours. <laughs> so obviously I was quite desperate at this point because I thought I'd lost the entire project. So I left my computer on for 72 hours. But it got to the point where it, my, it just couldn't handle it anymore. It was just getting so hot. I think I was down to like the last four hours and I couldn't risk leaving my computer on anymore. So I, I canceled the upload and I, I tweaked around with it a bit more. Uh, and as you can see here, I, 
I did another version, which is now um, an MPEG-4 instead of the M MKV, because MKV isn't read by a lot of um, editing softwares. Um, so um, iMovie won't read it, Premiere Pro won't, won't read it. I don't think Final Cut Pro reads them. Um, I haven't used that in years. Um, so I then got the um, MPEG-4 version, which then imported into Premiere Pro. So when I imported that folder, the coloration was awful. So I'm not sure whether Handbrake can't handle converting 4K properly. So you can see here, this was the, the MKV version that was sent to me. And this was the Handbrake conversion afterwards. The coloration is completely off. So this was the DVD. And then later on, I, I managed to get hold of a, a proper Blu-ray version that was 1080p and not 4K. So you can see the DVD and the Blu-ray coloration seems to be fine. MKV uh, 4K seemed really dark, and when I converted it, it went really light, and it was just terrible. Also, once I then imported the folders, because it uses that single folder to use your entire project, you just edit that one big folder. The the 4K was out. I think it, the running time was slightly different, and the Blu-ray the Blu-ray had running time difference to the blue uh, to the DVD. So all of my edits are out now. I've done <laughs> probably about 1,200 different edits. Um, so for me to manually change each one of those, it was just impossible. So you can see, look. So at frame um, 38.59, it was then a second later in the Blu-ray version. But if you look, it's almost it was almost two seconds later in the 4K version. So all of my edits were completely out, and I I really at this point I was I was lost. I don't know what I didn't know what to do. So I then went back to the first part of it and got the Blu-ray and tried to convert that. So at least I'd have a Blu-ray version that I could load in and then I could try and figure out this, this one second. But because I'd already tried that 172 hour conversion, my computer wasn't having any of it. If I left it on for more than an hour or so, it would start to really overheat, especially because of, we were going through summer at that point. So it just got to that point where I couldn't take the risk. So I didn't really know where to edit because it was one second. Now, my my instinct was it wasn't just an extra second for the blackout at the beginning of the Blu-ray. Um, so I then tried to figure out that if I use this program, Filmora 9, it's one of the only editing softwares that allows you to import an MKV. So I then did that and then I went through each frame, just literally got to the beginning of the project and then click next, 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 next and, and went over for each frame to count how many frames extra the Blu-ray cut was. So once I did that, I then realized that this second was actually half a second at the beginning and half a second at the end of the Blu-ray. So that works out because most frame rates are around 74 frames per second. I worked it out that it was 12, 12 frames blackout at the beginning that needed to be cut out and 12 frames at the end that needed to be cut out. So Filmora allowed me to do that, but it also then didn't allow me to export it because you have to pay for this software. So at least once I had that project, I was then able to put it into Handbrake again. And as you can see, I've got this 24, uh, 21, um, 21 gigabytes folder here. So this one's already converted. But what I then needed to do is there's another section here where you can count the frames. So I then had to count 12 frames in and then 12, 12 frames out of that back. And that then allowed me to change the settings, render it out, and get the true length of uh, time for that Blu-ray edit. So hopefully once I then re-imported it back in, I got the entire project back and everything was working perfect. So I had this huge nightmare and then all I needed to do is just change that first source material 
and everything just clicked back into place like a set of dominoes and everything was brilliant. So I then started to do loads of work. I got involved. I wasn't making videos at that point because I was going through some illness that I'm not going to talk about in this channel. Um, but yeah, I had everything sorted. And then I went up to, I went to do some work last night. I wanted to start filming this video. And then this happened. It was corrupt again. So it's gotta be this hard drive that keeps dismounting every time I'm trying to save this project because there's no way for this to keep doing this for any other reason. So I've now got the Blu-ray version. I've got the folder that I want. I've converted it to the size that I need. So I should be able to click locate. I should be able to find it in my hard drive. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna re-import the new version. So I'm just going to go to folder, I'm going to go to the one that I want, which is the largest folder here. I'm going to drag that into there. And then for this one, so I want the 2 hours and 21 minute version. So you can see my, my, my version is only 2 hours and 16. So I'm going to go on here, I'm going to right click and I want to go Link media. Locate. And I'm going to find it. So it's that one. Click OK. And boom! We are back in business. Hopefully all the edits are back now. Let me just check to see if that one's cool. And it's absolutely awesome. So we're back in business. <laughs> That's got to be the most stressful two months I've ever had. I mean, that was just so infuriatingly annoying. But hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, all of whatever it is, we're back on track and we're going to get this sorted out. Now, I've still got a few more edits to do, but it also means that I'm, I'm way ahead on all of these videos. So I'm gonna go back and do some more tutorials to talk you through the, the edits that I've done. But it's gonna be hard work for, for me to now show you how I've done those edits, uh, because I've already done a majority of the, the movie now. So we're back on track. Uh, so the other good thing about this is that I've also got several different uh, VFX uh, artists working with me. And we're really cracking on with some new scenes. So I'm going to do some feature videos soon and hopefully cross over and do some conference videos with those guys. Uh, and I cannot wait. So if you like my content, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll really, really hope to see you in the next video. Take care of yourself.